Well, joining us now to discuss is Eric Rosengren, former president of the Boston Fed. It's great to have you on a day like today. And that's exactly where we're going to start, because whether it was CPI on Tuesday, PPI today, it's really services where we saw this uptick or this resiliency in terms of the inflation picture. We know that tends to be tied to wages. What's the read through here, especially at a time where we've had so many Fed officials talking about how sticky this last mile to 2% actually can be? So you're exactly right. Both the PPI and CPI have shown very similar patterns. They've both been a little bit above expectations uh, for both the core and the total. And while goods have been uh, relatively modest in terms of their price increases, services have been more robust. And as you noted, uh, services are much more tied to wages. Uh, the good news is that the employment cost index, which is probably uh, the best way that our data measures private wages and salaries, um, has been coming down. It's still a little elevated at 4.3 percent. We'd expect at a 2 percent inflation rate that that number would be more like three and a half. Um, but uh, it's true that we've had now uh, two reports that are a little higher than expected. I would say that I'm still expecting uh, PCE and core PCE to continue to trend down. Um, the downtrend in both the wages and salaries and the fact that um, rents have been coming down on the spot price, uh, we've been waiting for that to be reflected a little more in the way uh, the government calculates those statistics. But I'm expecting by the time that we get to the May meeting, that uh, the data is going to indicate further progress on inflation. So May is still very much in play, it sounds like, according to you. I mean, May versus June, how much difference does that actually make in, if you see cuts happening a little bit later than the market is currently pricing in or had been pricing in at least earlier this week? Well, for the economy, May versus June makes almost no difference at all. Um, but obviously for somebody who has a loan or somebody who wants to get a mortgage, the timing can actually be pretty important. I think that uh, overall, my expectation is still that we'll be seeing the first cut in May. I think March uh, already was pretty much taken off the table. Um, and the data that we've gotten on both the uh, CPI and the PPI have highlighted the wisdom of the Fed waiting a little bit longer before they do their first cut and make sure that the progress they want to see on inflation is actually happening. I'd say, while I think it's going to be in May, it wouldn't surprise me if it gets pushed back to June. A lot depends on what kind of data we get between uh, now and May. Uh, my own forecast would be for weaker economic statistics than what we were getting in the fourth quarter, and that we would see the PCE continuing down hmm. uh, and having maybe the total end core right around two and a half percent or a little bit lower. So that would be an environment where okay. I think I would be probably comfortable um, with a, a rate cut, but we'll see if the committee agrees. So based on that, Eric, and based on the number of rate cuts many in the markets seemed to expect leading up to this point and where the market multiple is, are equity investors, you think, too optimistic? I think they're a little optimistic. Um, I'm not as convinced as some people that uh, November 7th, when uh, uh, they have the November meeting, is going to be a meeting where there would be a rate cut. And even in December, I'm a little skeptical. Um, so I would expect once they get started, they'll do 25 basis cuts and then pause after September and see what's happening with the economy. Um, it'll probably be a volatile period, given that we have a presidential election at that time. Um, and they'll want to see if they continue to get the progress to 2% inflation. So I think they're hopeful that they might actually hit the 2% inflation uh, by the end of the year. That's probably a little bit optimistic. Mm -hmm. um, I think they can take their time, given that the economy up till now has been reasonably strong. So based on history, what do you think are the implications for bond fixed income? So maybe... Uh, in the near term, I think people that were anticipating um, that bond rates would continue to come down are probably going to be a little disappointed. Uh, I think the bond interest rates are a little bit high now. They'll probably come down a bit more, but I don't think it's going to be dramatic.